What's up guys, Nathan here. Today I'm gonna give you nine post-flop poker tips for beginners. You're gonna learn exactly what hands to play, what flops to bet on, when to check, when to raise. I'm gonna run you through examples on the turn and river as well, teaching you how to get the maximum value out of the fish, how to confuse and outplay the good players, and also pull off high-level bluffs. If you struggle with the flop, turn, and river, the post-flop streets in poker, this is the video for you. Let's jump into it. Counting down from nine to one, here we go. All right guys, starting off at number nine, here is make a flop continuation bet. So we're gonna talk in this video from the flop, turn, and river. We're gonna go in order. The flop is the first three community cards that the dealer puts up on the table. The turn is the fourth card that the dealer puts in the middle, and the river is the fifth card. So we'll talk about those in a bit, and I'm gonna give you examples for every single strategy in this video. So let's talk about the flop first. So guys, when you go see the flop, you should be the pre-flop raiser most of the time. Now, I've already made many videos in the past here talking about how you want to raise before the flop most of the time. So when we have a hand like ace queen, which is the ace of hearts and the queen of spades in this example, we have raised already before the flop and we've got one caller. Now let me explain what a C bet or continuation bet is. So we are going to be continuing the aggression now that we've already built before the flop, we've already raised, and now we're gonna bet on this flop of the jack of clubs, five of diamonds, and three of hearts. Now some of you guys who are newer to the game are probably saying to yourself right now, Nathan, what are you teaching me? There's no ace on that flop. There's no queen on that flop. We don't have anything. Well, guys, here's the beautiful thing about poker. Most of the time, nobody has anything. In fact, two out of three times when you go see the flop, you're going to have no pair, no draw, just like we have in this example. And that's why nearly all of the examples in today's video, I'm going to be showing you the scenarios when we don't have anything. Everybody knows how to play their pocket aces, pocket kings. I don't don't need to make a video teaching you how to do that. What you're gonna learn in this video is the nuts and bolts of poker. It's how to win more pots like this when you don't have anything. So why do we bet here? Well, once again, we know most of the time they don't have anything, and we also have two excellent high cards, and we're only up against one opponent. And the final kicker here is the math dictates that if we only bet about 50% of the pot here, which I'm going to suggest you bet, so the pot's $10, for example, you bet $5, the math dictates that we only need to get a fold roughly around one out of three times in order to make this a break-even play from a profitability standpoint. So this is an absolute no-brainer, guys. You want to make a bet here and simply try to take the pot down now. All right, moving on to number eight, let's talk about floating the flop now versus legs. So let's talk about a totally different situation here now when we are the pre-flop caller. So we just called before the flop now and we're gonna be up against an aggressive player on another flop where we've totally missed. So let me break this down first. Floating in poker is when you make a call in position and that means you're acting last on the flop turn or river with the intention of taking it away later on in the hand. And I'm gonna give you examples. By the way, later on we talk about the turn and river of how to take the pot away. Crucially, we are up against a lag in this hand, which stands for a loose and aggressive player type, and I'm going to explain what that means more in a second. Basically, they have a very wide range. They can have a lot of different hands here. So once again, we have ace, queen, ace of hearts, and queen of spades, and we're up against an aggressive player here, guys. Flop comes down with a ten of hearts, eight of spades, and two of clubs. Once again, we have absolutely nothing. There's no ace, there's no queen, on this board and we don't have any legitimate straight draw either. We technically do have a backdoor straight draw. If it came with a running king and jack on the turn and river, we would make a straight, but we're really reaching for straws at this point. We don't have much on this board. So when a loose and aggressive player, guys, bets the flop here, you should be making the call. The reason why, guys, is because as we talked about before, a regular player is gonna miss this flop two out of three times and a loose and aggressive player who plays all sorts of crazy hands, we know that they're gonna have a ton more missed hands here that they're going to be betting with because they're an aggressive player. Let me give you a few examples of hands that a loose and aggressive player is going to bet here on the flop. Hands like ace jack, ace nine, king queen, king jack, queen jack, nine seven, seven six, and we are ahead of all of these hands. Many of them are just draws, some of them are weaker high cards. And a handful of pocket pairs as well. This player will bet like pocket nines, pocket sevens, pocket 
pocket sixes, and even versus those hands, we have tons of equity. Remember, we can hit an ace or a queen on the turn or river in order to beat those hands. So guys, in a situation like this, you want to call in position, and that is crucial. Typically, when I am out of position here, I will just check, and if they make a bet, I will fold. But if I am in position, they make a bet, I am typically going to be calling in this situation in order to try to take the pot away from them later. Guys, this is absolutely crucial to your development as a poker player is learning how to take pots away from decent players like this when you have nothing. And when you're just folding every single time, that's obviously not going to be a recipe for success. So if you are last to act, I want to make that crystal clear, you want to use this floating strategy versus aggressive players when you've missed the flop. Let's move on to post-flop tip number seven now, and let's talk about not forcing it versus bad players on bad flops. So we just talked about a regular player, loose and aggressive. Let's talk about our recreational friends now, our fishy friends, and let's talk about a really bad flop. So sometimes, guys, you just need to give up in poker. We just talked about floating. Now we're going to talk about just waving the white flag, giving up. Sometimes that is the most profitable play. So you've got king, queen in this example, king of hearts, queen of spades, and a fish calls you preflop. We are the preflop raiser here. Fish calls. Flop comes down with the eight of diamonds, six of clubs, and five of diamonds. Guys, this flop is an unmitigated disaster for our hand. This is a highly coordinated wet flop. Let me break that down for you. When I say a flop is highly coordinated, it means there is a ton of different draws on this board. First of all, if this player has any seven in their hand at all, a seven, king seven, jack seven, anything like this, they have an open-ended straight draw. And also this flop is wet. And what I mean by wet, when we say a flop is wet, it means it essentially has a flush draw. If this player has any two diamonds in their hand, they are going to have a flush draw, meaning they're not going to fold either. And we don't have any diamonds in our hand, you might have noticed as well, so we don't block diamonds and we have no draw on our own. And the final kicker here, guys, is that this is a recreational player. And for those of you guys who have been playing poker for any amount of time, you've probably already encountered these players. They don't fold anything. So if this player has any five, any six, any eight, if this player has pocket threes, if this player even has ace four. They're not going to fold, guys. So in a situation like this, you just want to check and give up on total disaster flops like this where you have nothing, zero draw, nothing, highly coordinated wet flop, and you're up against a fishy poker player. All right, guys, let's move on to the turn now. Post-flop poker tip number six is to double barrel the weak regs. Now, let me unpack this one. A double barrel in poker is when you have raised before the flop, you've bet the flop, we already talked about that before, and now you're going to bet on the turn as well. This is called a double barrel in poker. This is an incredibly strong play that puts an unbelievable amount of pressure on the specific player type here that we want to target, and that is the weaker regular. So we're talking about a decent player now. When I say regular, I of course mean a regular opponent. This is not a fishy player, and when I say weak, this is somebody who's looking for a reason to fold. These are the kind of players that I consistently target to make the big bluffs against. By the way, I cover this in multiple videos in my Elite Poker Training University. 50 plus videos, 17 plus hours of advanced poker training enrollment is open right now. And once again, there's multiple videos showing you how to bluff the weaker eggs. I will leave a link to enroll in the description below, but let's walk you through this example here, guys. This strategy is absolute money in today's games versus these weak players. So you raise up ace king, ace of hearts, king of spades, and a weak tight reg calls you. So let's go see another flop that we totally miss, a 10-5-4 with the club diamond diamond and heart. So a rainbow flop, there's no possible flush draw. So we already talked about a situation like this earlier in the video. This is just a slam dunk bet. Remember, we're only gonna bet about 50% of the pot. We already talked about the simple math. We talked about how this player is unlikely to have anything. So slam dunk bet, however they call. So let's go to the turn now. Turn comes down with the jack of diamonds. So guys, what should you do in a spot like this? Well, this is a spot where you want to double barrel 75% of the pot. So once again, double barrel means we're gonna bet here again on the turn. And now why do we bet 75% of the pot this time instead of 50%? Guys, the reason is, is that you want to put your foot down on the turn. And as we're going to discuss in a bit as well, on the river as well, in order to strike the fear of God in them, you want to let them know that, hey, I'm serious about this pot. If you want to continue calling here with some sort of weaker hand, it's going to cost you a lot of money. In fact, it might cost you every single chip that's remaining in front of you. So you don't want to accomplish that by betting small. You
You need to bet big here, guys, on the turn and river, whether you're bluffing or betting for value, meaning that you have a good hand, and we're going to talk about that in just a second. But let's wrap up this hand here, guys. A weak, tight regular definitely could have been floating us on this flop. Remember, that's just calling in position with a weaker hand. They could have been doing that with all sorts of hands, like a pocket nines, an ace five, even some sort of top pair, like a 10-9, a pocket sixes. All of these hands, guys, don't like to see another big card on the turn there and also it is important to note that that jack gives us a gut shot to the broadway straight meaning that if it came with any of the four remaining queens in the deck on the river we would make the nut straight so we have additional outs on top of our ace and king which we can also catch on the river assuming that this player is only on a one pair hand in this situation and we're going to talk about that in a couple minutes but let's move on to number five here post flop betting tip for beginners and that is to bet big for value on on the turn. So let's finally talk about an example here, guys, where we actually have a good hand. So if the turn comes with a safe card, I'm going to be betting big. We already just talked about how we're going to be bluffing big, 75% of the pot. Now we're going to be doing the exact same thing with a big value hand. So you have ace, jack, ace of diamonds, jack of spades, somebody limps preflop. Now I've made many videos before here on the channel. Limping, by the way, is when somebody just calls preflop. I am literally always going to be raising them up in a situation like this with any playable hand. So we raise, they call. So by the turn, the board reads the Jack of Diamonds, Four of Hearts, Eight of Spades, and Deuce of Clubs. Guys, in a situation like this, assuming, again, we raise preflop and then we bet the flop, I'm going to be betting big here. Again, on the turn, we have top pair, top kicker in this hand. And once again, same thing, guys. I want to bet big for value here. I want to let them know that it's going to cost them a lot of money here if they want to call down with a weaker jack, like a jack queen or a jack 10, or maybe they're chasing some draw like a 10-9, which was an open-ended straight draw on the flop, I want to let them know that it's going to be very, very expensive. So I'm going to bet 75% of the pot here when I have the big value hand. Same thing we just did when we were bluffing. So example, if you're in a $1, $2 cash game, pot's $40. I'm going to be betting $30 here on the turn. All right, guys, moving on to post-flop poker tip number four, and that is making big folds versus the tight players on the turn. So we've already talked about bluffing on the turn and we just talked about value betting on the turn. Now let's talk about a situation where you need to make the fold. And that specifically guys is when a tight player raises you. So you raise it up pre-flop with the ace of hearts, king of spades and a tight player calls. All right, so let's go see the flop now of the ace of clubs, five of diamonds and four of hearts. You make a bet, they call. Now I don't think I need to explain this one in too much detail. We flop top pair top kicker this is going to be a standard bet if we're going to bet on the 10-5 deuce and we have nothing of course we're also going to bet on the ace 5-4 i probably don't even need to tell you that so the flop is totally standard turn comes down with the seven of spades so guys once again we're going to be betting here there's absolutely zero reason not to bet they can still have plenty of hands that we're ahead of like an ace queen ace jack they could have a hand like pocket jacks or pocket queens or pocket tens that simply don't want to go away yet so we definitely want to be making a bet here again and once again for value we expect to have the best hand here most of the time we're going to bet 75 percent of the pot as you know but they raise in this example guys what is going on here well this is where the alarm bells need to be going off in your head guys because tight players in today's games are not going to raise you on the turn guys with any of the hands that we just mentioned like the ace queen ace jack pocket queens pocket jacks pocket tens no, they're just going to call with those hands and they're usually passive by the way as well. That is what tight passive players do is they just make the call with those hands. When they raise you here on the turn guys, they are representing a very, very narrow range of monster hands like for example, an ace five, a pocket fives, a pocket fours, maybe some sort of weird straight like a six eight that just got there on the turn, a pocket sevens. Basically they're representing a monster here guys. You're going to be drawing dead most of the time here if you you make the call in my experience because if they do have the straight or three of a kind like we just talked about there are no cards in the deck that you can catch on the river to make you the best hand so guys in a nutshell when you double barrel and remember that means raising before the flop and then you bet the flop and then you bet the turn if you are up against one of these regular tight players and they raise you and you only have a one pair hand 
please believe me, you need to be folding in a situation like that. They're going to turn over something that absolutely crushes you the vast majority of the time. All right, guys, moving on to the river. Post-flop poker tip number three for beginners is getting three streets of value versus the fish. So let's move back to our fishy friends here, the recreational players who can have tons of different hands that they're playing. So you raise it up pre-flop with the ace of hearts, jack of clubs, and a recreational player calls. We go see the flop of jack, eight, five, with two spades you make a bet they call once again we don't really need to go through this one bad player we got top pair top kicker of course we're just going to be betting big here for value i talk about this by the way in my first book crush on the micro stakes where the reason i was able to create some of the highest winnings of all time especially in low stakes online games is getting the absolute maximum value out of fishy players like this i will also leave a link to that in the description below but let's move on to the turn here which is the three of hearts so guys once again this is basically the most harmless card in the deck. We are definitely going to be betting here again and betting big. So they make the call here and the river comes down with the king of hearts. Now the mistake that a lot of people make here, guys, is just checking. Guys, you need to remember that with a recreational player, there are so many worse hands that they can have that they're still going to call you with here on the river. For example, a worse top pair like a queen jack or a king jack. They could also have a hand like an ace eight a king eight pocket tens pocket queens guys i could go on and on do not be afraid of the king on the river here it is just a small percentage of the time that they might have hit that card you always want to make another thin value bet here on the river get the maximum amount of chips out of the recreational players every single time that's been one of the absolute keys to my success over the years at the poker tables all right guys let's move on to post slap tip number two now which is using the old stop and go technique with top pair so let's move it back now to playing against a decent player so once again we have ace jack ace of hearts jack of spades flop comes down with the jack eight seven rainbow you bet they call once again we don't really need to go into too much detail there we have top pair top kicker we're going to make a bet when they call we're going to assume probably have something reasonably decent they could have a draw but they also could have us beat with some sort of over pair or some sort of weird two pair an eight seven something like that but it's a fairly standard spots so the turn comes down with the six of hearts now what should you do in a spot like this well guys you should check in this spot all right so why should we check in a spot like this guys well in this situation remember we're up against a decent player here most of the time here when we bet again on the turn i'm going to expect that they're going to throw away most of their decent hands like a king jack like a queen jack like an ace eight like a pocket nines however if we check here we can often and make a big value bet on the rivers is something that I call using deception value versus the tighter players in today's games. I talk about that in my third poker book. I'll also link that up in the description below. But guys, this is a typical spot in today's games where you want to be checking here on the turn because there's not a lot of value for us to be betting here. Once again, if we bet here on the turn, most decent players are going to simply throw away all of their worst hands and we're only going to get action from hands that beat us so the turn goes check check river comes down with the deuce of clubs what you want to do here guys is value bet big i would suggest around 80 percent of the pot and you're going to get paid off by all these hands now like a king jack a queen jack pocket nines pocket tens and ace eight because they're not going to believe you have anything guys this is a very standard way to play your top pair versus decent players we just talked about getting three streets of value versus the fish well that's often not going to happen versus good players in today's games try out this stop and go technique which is often based around a bet on the flop a check on the turn and then a big bet on the river and i think you're going to get the maximum value with these hands all right guys let's move on to post flop poker tip number one that all beginners need to know and that is to don't hero call versus the good rigs so let's talk about the final situation now where you've got top pair on the river and you are in the passenger seat you've been calling the whole way and let's talk about their range on the river so guys, hands like ace jack and king jack are absolutely notorious for getting a lot of beginners in trouble. So let me give you an example here. You've got the king of hearts, jack of spades, and the flop comes down with the king of clubs, four of diamonds, and three of spades. So in this hand, we are the pre-flop caller. They make a bet, you call. Pretty standard stuff here, guys. We've got top pair, but there's not really a huge point in us raising here because when we raise, we're often only going to get called from a decent player.
player with hands that beat us like an ace king or a king queen and they're often just going to throw away all of their junk so this is a typical spot where you just want to be calling most of the time here when you've got top pair and the third best kicker like we do in this situation so the turn comes down with the seven of hearts they bet again they're double barreling us guys the alarm bells definitely need to be going off in your head here when a decent player bets again on the turn there are some aggressive players in today's games who are capable of doing this with a hand like ace queen or ace jack or even a hand like pocket tens but most of the time here guys when they double barrel you on the turn they are showing a lot of strength however we still have top pair decent kicker so we're often still going to make the call here but let's go see the river now of the four of spades guys in a situation like this where they bet again they are making the triple barrel here against you let me tell you guys from my over a decade as a professional poker player i can tell you that this is literally never a bluff if you make the call here versus a decent player and that is very important versus the fish here i'm always calling we're talking about a decent player here if you make the call here they are going to turn over one of the hands which beats you here like an ace king a king queen or some sort of lucky trips maybe they have a hand like five four which hit trips on the river i think you guys understand what i'm saying they could have a hand like pocket threes which has a full house guys bottom line do not hero call with top pair when a decent regular player bets against you on the flop turn and river it is simply lighting money on fire because they're not bluffing in this situation all right guys i hope these nine post flop tips helped like and subscribe if you found this video helpful and if you want to know my entire strategy to crush the small and mid stakes games make sure you grab a copy of my free poker cheat sheet that'll be the top link in the description below thanks a lot for watching guys i will catch you next time